What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we got to talk about what went down on this episode of Monday Night Raw. The go-home show for Monday Night Raw uh, Elimination Chamber is this uh, Saturday. I'm looking forward to us doing the 12-hour stream live on the In The Clutch page, YouTube, and on Twitch. So that should be a good time. So make sure you guys join us. And shout out to everybody who was part of the live streams on Monday Night Raw. I mean, on YouTube and on Twitch today. We appreciate y'all showing out. So we're looking forward to that this weekend. But we got to talk about what's developing with the bloodline. And what stories they're trying to start to tell with some of the individuals in the bloodline so tonight they started off the show with drew mcintyre versus cody rhodes very great match could have been main of main eventing of the show but they obviously had some other plans with jay versus gunther to main event the show for the intercontinental championship also a very good match as well this match was great between drew and cody and this was so interesting how they set this up Cody looks like he's about to win the match. He looks like he's about to uh, put away Drew. Jimmy comes out there. You see Jimmy out there. You're like, yo, what the hell's going on? Jimmy's trying to interfere in the match. Cody's running defense. And Cody is about to hit Drew with the Cody cutter. I mean, not the Cody cutter, the crossroads. And just like what happened at last year's WrestleMania, Solo comes out there with that dusty ass dingy ass black hoodie and right before cody he's about to hit the crossroads he's samoan spikes cody right in the throat rep doesn't see it and i'm like oh they pulled the shades out of what happened with him at last year's wrestlemania and then i like the fact that drew's looking at solo this is the same guy that screwed him out of his championship win against uh, Roman Reigns at Clash at the Castle a few years back. And once again, Solo in that dingy, dusty-ass black hoodie did the same thing to him. So Drew's looking at him, and he's kind of conflicted, but he sees Cody, he's down, he's injured, and he hits Cody with the Claymore kick, and he pins him. One, two, three. And uh drew is the only person to have pinned cody in a singles match since guess who roman reigns and guess who was involved and caused those pins to happen solo in his black dingy ass hoodie <laughs> so i love the storytelling there the the parallels it's it's i guess you can say it's a more or less Roman had sent them over there, or it could have been The Rock or both of them, has sent them over there essentially to kind of let Cody know this is what's going to happen to you at this year's WrestleMania. It's literally going to be a repeat of what happened last year. So I like the parallels of Cody about to win the match and he gets screwed over again. Hopefully, this awakens Cody to realize he has to have help. And they cut to a scene in the back where uh cody's getting checked up on adam pierce is like oh solo and jimmy they're gonna get fined or whatever the bloodline don't give a damn about no damn fines but you know he was trying to check on uh cody rose adam pierce what he said he's fine he's fine and he's just sitting there he's thinking he's holding his throat he's like damn what am i gonna do like kind of you know didn't say that but he was thinking that way and then you see seth rollins in his wife's blouse or whatever the fuck he had a see-through polka dot shirt on <laughs> so he had his wife's gear on and he just he doesn't say any words you see seth he looks at him he pats him on the knee and he walks out and no words needed to be said though no words would need to be said michael cole even announced on commentary seth did say he doesn't mind being cody's shield honestly cody's gonna have to take seth on this offer offer because he's not going to win by himself cody can't do this by himself no matter how much he wants to because he's going against crazy odds and it's gonna take more than steph to help him he's gonna get if if i'm them to book it i would use the stars that have been screwed over by the bloodline for so long they need to be the ones to assist him 
I know some people are thinking, oh, maybe bring Stone Cold in for The Rock. You could do that if you want to. But I just, I think the attention needs to be on the current stars that are sick of the bloodline going against the bloodline itself in a sense of helping Cody even the odds because it's not going to be enough for Seth to be the only one to help him. So it's going to be very interesting. And I think it may play into what I'm about to talk about next, what happened with Jay versus Gunther. Great match. I will say this. They made Jay look very believable with hitting him with multiple spears towards the end of the match. It looked like Gunther was about to lose and he was about to. But then you see another motherfucker in a black dingy ass hoodie and you're thinking it's solo. Nope. It's Jimmy. He's ringing on the, the bell, the bell that they used to start and end the match. He's hitting it over and over and over and over and over. Distracts the ref, distracts everybody. It's Jimmy. And then they get security trying to escort him out here. Uh, Jay jumps over through the ropes to knock everybody down. Security and Jimmy while they're escorting him out of here. But ultimately, that extra time and distraction caused Jay to lose. Jay goes to the top rope. And he ends up, uh, Gunther ends up putting his knees up, ends up countering the uh, the splash, and he ends up uh, rolling rolling Jay up into a pin for the one, two, three, and he narrowly escaped beating Jay Uso to retain the championship. After that, Jimmy comes in there, starts attacking him, and saying, "You think you can win a championship without me?" Nah, that's not happening. You got to remember, I'm the bigger brother. He hits him with one uh, Uso splash from one corner of the ring, then goes to the top, hits him with another Uso splash from another corner of the ring, and that's how we end off the show. And I, the reason why I say this will potentially play into what can possibly happen, especially with Cody needing help, I think Cody and Jay are going to align themselves um, this WrestleMania season. They need to. They need to. They're going to align themselves. But we are, they are finally in the motion of brother versus brother. We've all kind of thought this was going to happen. Jay was going to get screwed over by Jimmy. And the way they got them over there, they attacked Cody in his match. And then Jay ended up getting screwed over by Jimmy in his own match. So now it's like, okay, they have drawn the battle lines. I think Jay and Cody, they need to have some type of conversation. We got to handle up on these guys. Uh, Jay can focus on taking out Jimmy. And maybe, maybe after the match, because I, I do think they're going to have a match at WrestleMania. That's what they're setting it up. Maybe after the match, Jimmy comes to his senses or start to come to his senses. Maybe that's the case. Because I think, that match that happened on night one, Jimmy versus Jay. It's going to be a great match. That promo package alone, it's going to be chef's kiss. I already know. Jimmy versus Jay, night one. Jimmy loses. You have Jimmy lose. The Bloodline members like Roman, maybe even The Rock, but mostly Roman doesn't want anything to do with Jimmy. When Jay beats him, Bloodline, especially Roman, has nothing he wants to do with Jimmy. Like he's like, you're out. You let your brother beat beat you. It's over. You don't need to be in the bloodline. They start to disrespect him potentially. They can start telling that story. And maybe, just maybe, Jimmy may be one of the people that you're like, you know what? Maybe I was wrong about this the entire time. But leading up, this is gonna be good. I can't wait for Cody. He needs to get his get back on Solo. Same thing with Jay, and they need to work together too. There needs to be some type of conversation. Hey, I got to handle up on Jimmy, but best to believe I'm going to have my back. I'm going to have your back against Roman because trust me, you're going to need more than just Seth. They are like, I can see a situation where Seth and Cody are having a conversation about working together, and then uh, Jay comes into the mix. Now, of course, there's going to be a little bit of tension between Rollins and Jay. Obviously, uh, you know, Jay has been rocking with the bloodline for some time, but they all understand the greater common enemy right now is taking out the bloodline. So he's like, you know what? You're going to need more help than just um, than the, uh, than just uh, Seth. Because Seth knows him from the shield. 
but I've known Roman from growing up. If there's anybody that knows him better than anybody, even you, Seth, it's me. I grew up with the guy. So they're going to need all the help they can get. I'm looking forward to it, man. This should be very, very, uh, very, very interesting, man. But comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy uh, the Go Home Show tonight? Also, did you guys enjoy uh, the storytelling they're telling with uh, Solo attacking Cody and Jimmy attacking Jay in their respective matches? And where do you think things are going to be going into the Elimination Chamber? Because Michael Cole did make a mention that Seth and Cody are on the Grayson Waller show uh, at the Elimination Chamber. And he mentioned that Paul Heyman had talked to him. He talked to Grayson Waller last Friday. So the question is, what conversation was had? What does the bloodline have in store for them on this show? What did Paul Heyman want Grayson Waller to potentially do? It's going to be very, very interesting to see how things play out. But I appreciate all the love and support. Roll to 150K. And I'm still here on Speed of YouTube, Wrestle Champion of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.